Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Lisa Pellrine. I'm the Director of Enrollment Management here at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall School. While we all can't physically be on campus at the moment, we're hoping to bring our campus and um, some of our students to you and just to experience uh, everything about CHCH in our community, our academics and programs. Um, I have five students who are joining us this afternoon, along with a couple of my admissions team members, um, who will be, you know, um, again, taking you kind of on this virtual tour. Of course, this is the first time we're doing this, and uh, students are often used to just uh, walking families um, individually around campus, which is it's a little bit more natural, but, you know, I told them just to be their authentic selves and, and just really talk about their experiences here at CHCH. All right, so I'm going to um, start off by having our students do a quick introduction, and then I'm going to hand things over to Caroline to get this tour started. So, um, Henry, if you want to start first and just um, introduce yourself, and then we'll go around. Hi, my name is Henry Lebed. I'm from Brookline, Massachusetts. Uh, I came in as a freshman, um, and I'm a senior right now, and uh, I'm a day student. Great. Thank you, Henry. Uh, next up is Max. Hi guys, my name is Max. I'm a current junior at Chapel Hill. I have been coming to Chapel Hill since my freshman year and I live in Ashland, Massachusetts. Great, thank you, Max. Uh, I don't think we could hear you, Lisa, on that one. Oh, Sonia, did you? Oh, um, Sonia, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, my name is Sonia Gladstone. I'm from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Um, I'm a boarding student. I've been at Chapel Hill since ninth grade. Great. Thank you, Sonia. Next up is Christian. Uh, my name is Christian. I am from Brooklyn, Massachusetts. I am a day student at CHCH and I've been going there ever since uh, freshman year. Wonderful. Thanks, Christian. All right. And last but not least is Sophia. Hi, guys. I'm Sophia Blair Golden. I'm a junior at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall. I'm also a day student. I'm from Whalen, Massachusetts, and I've been coming to Chapel Hill since I was a sophomore. Great, thank you, Sophia. So again, just a reminder that at any point you can enter your questions in the chat section and um, Christina will be helping me field those questions. And I'm gonna turn things over to Caroline now to introduce herself and then we'll get the tour started. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us for our first virtual tour, enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Caroline Finnamore. I am the admissions officer here and I have these lovely tour guides with me to help give you the tour today. Matt, you can go ahead and share your screen whenever you're ready. All right, so we are going to, going to start with the barn. That's our visual and performing arts center. Um, it opened up in February after a little over a year of renovation. An additional 900 square feet was added, brand new theater space, brand new expanded art studio on the third floor. Christian is gonna start us off with the barn. Um, hi again. Um, so the barn, as uh, Ms. Finnemore already stated, uh, already stated uh, opened up in uh, February. It went under a renovation that lasted about a year and a half. And it's got the expanded, it expanded the art space on the third floor, and now we have an art gallery, which is the thing that pops out of the building. Um, yeah, at CCH, you are required to take uh, two years of art, meaning it can be a visual art like um, um, drawing, painting, wheel throwing, um, or digital video production, which I take myself, or it can be uh, intro to theater. Um, we also have the option for AP Studio Art um, and Certificate of Distinction in Visual Art. And the barn isn't just a place like for art, like we, we've also used it for other events such as um, there was a project that the junior U.S. history class did for African American History Month where it was sort of like um, like an area where uh, the juniors prepared like presentations or posters, and it was sort of like a walkthrough, sort of like science fairish. Like to add to what Christian said, um, for the US um, History African American Museum, I thought it was really cool as a person of color. I thought it was really nice to kind of be in a group with my friends. Um, the group that I was in, we did Black Women Pioneers, 
So over the course of a week, we kind of came up with like a little museum exhibit about black women pioneers. And then we got to set it up in the barn. And then we had the coolest like presentation where people got to walk through and look at all the different stations. So it was kind of just a nice way to celebrate um, um, African American culture and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And that happened at the end of February, so it was right after the barn opened, which was really cool for a lot of folks on campus to go see the space again. All right, thank you. Our next stop is going to be South Hall, so we're going to head across the pond. And Sonia will tell us about South Hall. Hi, guys. Um, so South Hall is one of three dorms on campus. We have um, South Hall, which is the upperclassmen all-girls dorm. Um, so right across the way, basically a straight line is Harrington Hall, which is our lower classman girls dorm. Um, so we are a school of about 180 and 60% of that day and 40 boarding. Um, I am a boarder, I lived in South Hall this year. Um, for our student body, uh, we have about 20% international. Um, this year we had 10 countries and eight different US states represented. Great, thanks, Sonia. Our next stop is going to be the cottage in the SAS building, and Sonia will also explain to us about that. Yes, so um, the cottage is primarily where all the ninth graders are gonna have their classes just to make the transition from middle to high school a, bit, a little bit easier. Um, so, and then we have SAS, which is on the, the second floor, which I've taken all three years I've been at Chapel Hill, and it's really helped me a lot. Um, SAS is primarily a um, class skills and academic support it's what SAS stands for and um, so we it aims to improve students strengths and um, also improve the weaknesses so that is um, uh, executive function organization and self advocacy skills like every other class at Chapel Hill um, SAS is a 75 minute class um, for the lower classmen, we have that three times a week, um, and it's a 20-minute lesson with a, a 25-minute lesson, excuse me, with a 15-minute work period. Um, and those lessons are about different things, mainly executive function and even like small skills, like you know, take how to take notes. Um, um, so when you get up to um, being an upperclassman, so junior year, um, you have basically a 75 minute work block to help with get all your work done since there's a bit more work. And then always the ratio is gonna be about, uh, is exactly um, four students to one teacher. And then, so for ninth and 10th grade, SAS basically focuses, mainly, excuse me, mainly focuses on like time management and organization skills. Um, which is, was very helpful for me coming in. And then, um, so obviously then when you get to be an 11th and 12th grader, we, you continue those, but you kind of, you know, do them yourself a little bit more. And then uh, about 80% of um, ninth graders do take SAS, 50% of 10th and 11th graders, and then about maybe less than 20% of 12th graders. Um, so the whole point of SAS is you, when you are an upperclassman, I think I said this, but you can lean off. So versus three times, two times, one time. So it is made to lean off. I know I'm in the process of doing that. So yeah, um, SAS has also helped me grow as a person and a learner. I feel way more comfortable, you know, telling teachers I need help. I feel, you know, comfortable going, doing my work alone somewhere, which was very hard for me in the beginning. So yeah. Okay, great. Um, SAS does stand for Skills and Academic Support. I know that Sonia mentioned that, but I just wanted to reiterate that. Are there any other additional questions right now about Skills and Academic Support? All right, we will head to our next stop. We are going to be heading to Wilkins Hall, where Max will tell us all about Wilkins Hall. All right, so this is Wilkins Hall, and this is where the uh, upperclassmen, so sophomores, juniors, and seniors will typically have most of their classes. Um, so in this um, building, we have several different English classes, uh, math classes, science, biochemistry classes, anatomy classes, 
and history classes. There's, I believe, like nine or so classrooms in Wilkins. There's also a basement where there's a classroom. Um, so some of the classes that we offer, so some of the, for the, for, in order to graduate, you, there are some requirements you have to do. You have to take four years of English. You have to do three years of math, which includes algebra two. You have to do three years of history, which includes U.S. history, and you have to do um, three years of a science, and two of those have to be lab sciences. So I believe um, you take physics freshman year, biochemistry one, and biochemistry two sophomore or junior year. Um, so that's some of the classes that we offer in Wilkins. Um, I spend a lot of my time in Wilkins where I'm, when I'm you know, in my classes, and it's a lot of the classes are... Um, Pretty, uh, I also would like to mention that the class size, typically most of them are 10 to 15 students to one teacher. So I like that there's, I can, I'm comfortable, you know, in class asking for help and everything. And um, I do enjoy the class size as, as, rather than a 20 or 30 kid public school class. So yeah. Max, what is your favorite class? What has your favorite class been this academic year? Uh, my favorite class this academic year has been U.S. history because what I really like about Chapel Hill classes is that they are really discussion based, which I like because I really like to see different people's point of view and I like talking with people. It's a big, um, it's one of my, my favorite things to do. I just like talking to people, socializing. Um, and I, what I really like about, like about U.S. history is I've learned so much about our the world around me that I did not know before and I have a really good teacher Mr. Daly and um, it's just so much fun I like what we learned in that class and I've the project that we did for the um, which we, um, Sophia and Christian talked about was a really impactful pro project and I really enjoyed it and everyone liked it a lot and I that's my, probably like my favorite class I've taken in Chapel Hill so far. That's great. All right, Max, if you don't mind, let's talk about the schedule next. The All right. Schedule. All right. So this is the daily schedule of Chapel Hill. So as you can see, each class meets three times a week. So um, the, we have uh, each class is by block. So it's kind of like some public schools where they're, let's say I have English A block to history B block and, and so on. So each class is by block. Um, a couple things about the schedule that I would like to mention are office hours. So for office hours, that is a time between the first and second period where students are allowed to go in and um, go to their teachers and ask them for help with any, any part of their work, whether it's a paper or a project or some homework that they've missed or just a check-in. Um, another thing I should mention is that the sophomores and freshmen are required, have required office hours. So there's like a little schedule that they put on um, they'll like email it to you or it's like around like campus then if you like your last name will be to a specific teacher and you just go in there and work or you can ask them for questions as well. A couple other things I'd like to mention is the lunch. How lunch works is that when I so when I was talking about Wilkins if you have a class in Wilkins you will have class first and then lunch but if you have a class anywhere else on campus which it whether it's the cottage, the barn, uh, learning comments which we'll talk about later, um, Atwood, where, where we used to have our classes, um, you will have um, first lunch and then class. Um, a couple other things about the schedule, uh, I'd like to talk about the assembly. So an assembly is, the assembly is where the whole community gathers and uh, typically we have a senior presentation which we will talk a little bit more about later. We all gather in the chapel and we all, um, be, we all sit down and just the Dr. Conrad talks and with the senior president, I really like the senior presentations because I, I get like to learn more about my classmates around me. Um, I also like the sense of community at Chapel Hill because I like seeing everyone and just everyone together. And I like that, that sense of community that I never had at any other school. So that's basically what the uh, assembly is. Um, a couple other things are class meetings slash advisory. So every other week, so um, when you come into Chapel Hill, they'll give you like the planner, which has the schedule for every week of the year. So um, for advisory, you will be with your, um, you will get assigned an advisor for every year, um, which is one of the teachers on the team. So there's, each teacher is assigned to like a, di a different team and you'll meet with them for half an hour to go over progress notes, progress notes, which are these notes, where are notes that come out every Tuesday that 
um, te that like teachers will say like if you're missing any work, how you're doing in class and everything and what you've covered for the week. Um, and I think I've covered most of what I needed to cover. So thank you. Yes. Yep. Thank you so much, Max. All yeah, right. Next, we're going to head to the gym where Sophia will talk to us about our after school requirements and sports. Hi guys. So for after school requirements, um, every student is required to do one of our after school activities for every three trimesters. And for two of the trimesters, you're required to do a team activity. Although it is a team activity, that doesn't just mean being on a sports team. That could also mean doing drama. So either being in the play or the production, the musical, or it could also be in drama tech, which kind of works on all the lights, the sets, the costumes, makeup, stuff like that. Um, to speak a little bit more about sports, our sports roster includes soccer, cross country, volleyball, basketball, wrestling, softball, lacrosse, ultimate frisbee, and tennis. Um, I personally, I've played competitive soccer like my whole life. I've always played very competitively at a high level on club teams. Um, I was a little bit worried coming to Chapel Hill just because I thought that I wouldn't be pushed to my full potential, but I decided to join the soccer team my first year as a sophomore, and I didn't feel any, like, less of a push or an expectation to kind of make myself become better. Um, I thought it was really cool that our coaches are actually also our teachers. So to speak more about that, I decided to play basketball for the first time in my like entire life, my sophomore year, um, which was definitely nerve wracking, but it helped because our main coach for the girls varsity team was actually also my English teacher at the time. So it was nice to have her in the classroom, but also get to know her outside of the classroom. So I feel like she kind of got to know me more as a person and not just as a student. Um, so for sports, we've actually won 13 championships in the last three years. And our, we do have JV and varsity teams for many of our sports teams, um, but we don't make any cuts. So everybody will make onto a team um, best for their fit. Um, so a little bit about our gym. Um, we do a lot more than just sports in the gym. Something that I really like to do or my favorite thing in the gym is actually our pep rally. Um, it's during our spirit week and it's really just a time where the whole school kind of convenes in the gym and you just show your school spirit. We have a lot of performances and they have MCs and it's just a really good time. Thanks, Sophia. Going back a little bit to some of our after school activities, Christian is going to tell us a little bit more about the drama performance activity. All right. Um, so uh, I am in uh, drama performance. I've done drama performance uh, all three trimesters for my three years at CHCH so far. Um, and uh, for drama performance, it doesn't matter whether you've been uh, acting your whole life or you're just starting, though. They're very accepting, and there's uh, you don't get cut if you want to be in the show. You will have a part in the show. Um, some of the and also back to also drama tech. You um, that's also like what Sophia said is a um, team sport. So you build, you work on the lights, the sets. It's basically uh, it makes uh, the show. They're responsible for making the show look pretty, basically. Um, um, and uh, some of our past shows that we've done um, were uh, Shrek, was, which was actually the first show we've done in the barn, our new barn. Um, we've also done um, Susification of Romeo and Juliet, The Drowsy Chaperone, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, Matt Woman of Shio, uh, Peter Wendy, and The Old Man and the Old Moon. Those are the shows. Christian, can you tell me um, which of the different types of shows, genre of shows, are offered in the fall, winter, and spring? All right. Um, of course, in, in the we do uh, plays in the fall and spring, and in the winter we do musical. In the fall, the play is mostly a comedy, and in the spring the uh, play is more of like a drama type, and in the Winter, which is the musical, it kind of really depends on like what the musical is, but that's how like the our theater life schedule works. 
All right, thank you, Sophia and Christian. Are there any questions right now on after school activities or anything about the gym? Yes, um, are there any other options besides theater and um, sports for an after school activity? Um, so we have, so we have, um, we also have, so in addition to uh, theater and sports, we also have newspaper, we have makerspace, and we also have a media intern, and there's also independent study. So if you want to do something uh, like an after-school activity that's not in the school, you are allowed to do that as an independent study. Another thing that's cool is actually for fitness, if you wanted to get in that exercise for one of the trimesters, but not necessarily play a team sport, um, if you wanted to do fitness in the winter, say, and then do a spring and fall sport, you could always do fitness, which is essentially you're in the gym um, and you have an advisor in the gym and you basically just get to work out for that hour, hour and a half after school. Um, so I think that's really cool. And where is the fitness center on campus located? The fitness center is above the gym. Um, it actually has a huge window that looks into the gym area. Thank you very much. All right, next we're gonna head over to the assembly hall where Henry will be able to tell us all about that. Hi, I'm Henry. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit quickly about the history of CHCH before we get into the actual logistics. Um, CHCH was derived from three uh, schools merging together, um, an all-girls school dating back to 1860, Chauncey Hall, um, an all-boys school founded in 1828 in Boston, Huntington School, and another all-boys school, which was, um, sorry, which was Chapel Hill. Um, and the chapel dates back to uh, Chapel Hill. Um, it's actually on the other side of the hill. Um, on our campus um, and a big question I get when giving tours about our um, when we go to the chapel is is there a religious affiliation with the chapel and we are in we do not have religious affiliation at Chapel Hill. Um, the assembly hall or the chapel is where we have most of our uh, assemblies so we'll have meetings like the senior presentation, um, all school announcements along with other things like uh, our winter concerts, and we've also had plays and NHS um, inductions happening in this uh, hall. Um, the senior, uh, and a big part of the senior capstone is the senior presentation, which happens in the assembly hall, and the senior presentation is a way for our seniors to kind of present themselves to the school, give a little bit more information about themselves, um, and kind of talk about an academic, social, or personal growth that they've gone through at Chapel Hill. Um, along with that, there's the other senior capstone requirements, which are, are which involves an analytical paper, which will be written in uh, English class, a research paper, which will be written in history class, and community service hours, and then again, the senior presentation. Um, and the senior presentation can be take from about 10 to 15 minutes, um, and it's a topic of whatever the student would like to choose. Henry, tell me about what your senior presentation was about. Um, for my senior presentation, I did a little skit mixed with a more serious note at the end. So I had four of my teachers who I felt represented me in different areas. So I had a, some coaches, some classroom teachers, some outside teachers who I've met through uh, various activities. Um, and I had, I wrote a little script for them and we acted it out in front of the school. And then after I stood up on the podium and spoke a little bit about my journey through CHCH and my four years there and how I've changed. What are some other uh, events that we've had, academic events that we've had in the assembly hall? So along with uh, the senior presentations, uh, as I said before, we have the NHS induction that happens there. We have some winter concerts. We also have the Senate simulation where um, all three of our history classes, US History, Honors US History, and AP Gov um, take on the roles of different senators and run a mock Senate sim. Um, and then we also have, I believe, trying to think we also have sometimes we'll have some other functions in there but it's a very nice um gathering space on campus and i would say a big staple within the campus itself thank you henry attached to the assembly hall is our learning commons and sophia will be able to tell us about that 
So in the Learning Commons, this is where we have all of our world language classes. Um, at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall, we do have a two-year language requirement. Um, we offer French and Spanish up to the advanced levels. Um, I have taken Spanish since seventh grade. Um, I started in my old public school. So I thought that it was really nice that when I came to Chapel Hill, I was able to kind of jump in at a point, like in a point where I had already, um, where I fit most comfortably. So instead of having to repeat and start in Spanish one and learn everything all over again, I actually got to start in Spanish three, um, which I thought was really helpful. Another cool thing that we have in the language um, department is an independent study option. So one of my friends actually in my grade, she's doing an independent um, study and learning Italian. So that's really cool too. Thank you, Sophia. Are there any questions right now about the commons in the assembly hall? All right, so Sophia is going to take us to Morgan Hall next. So Morgan Hall is back over the hill and this is where Dr. Conrad, our head of school, and Ms. Daniels, the assistant to school leadership, have their offices. Um, typically, you'd think that the head of school or the principal's office is somewhere you go when you get in trouble, but um, Morgan is nothing like that. To me, I see Morgan as more of like a meeting up spot um, where I can go and just hang out with friends between classes during office hours. I always find myself in there talking to Ms. Daniels. We kind of all joke around and call her the campus mom because she really is one of the best resources on campus. Um, I always go to her if I need anything. Um, also in Morgan, we have our college counselor, Ms. Fink. Ms. Fink is definitely like awesome um, as a junior, um, and I'm also the oldest in my family, so I've never gone through the college process before with anybody else. Um, it's definitely overwhelming, but Ms. Fink is always there. I know earlier in the year before everybody really started um, their college process, I emailed her um, with questions about playing sports in college. My goal is to play D2 or D3 soccer in college. And Ms. Fink was really helpful with kind of helping me fill out questionnaires, stuff like that, and finding schools that would be a good fit academically while also being a good fit athletics wise. Um, one of the awesome things that Ms. Fink actually does is a college boot camp for um, rising seniors over the summer before their senior year. Essentially what you do in the boot camp is Ms. Fink helps you set up all of your accounts. For us, we're starting to use SCORE now, which is this new online college um, website. I think it's really cool. They do this cool like online virtual tour thing. Um, so she helps you set up all your accounts she also helps you go over all your applications, and she also will help you edit, modify, rewrite your college essay, which we actually start our junior year in our English class, which is nice to have that other perspective from our, um, our junior year English teacher. All right, great. Are there any questions about Morgan Hall and college counseling right now? Yes, we have a question about whether or not we have opportunity for help with SAT and ACT prep. So for me, I actually have been taking all year um, until we went on March break. I had been taking ACT prep classes at school actually um, every Saturday morning. Um, there's a lot of different options for times. I know I decided to just take the earlier time but the school helps you set up classes for either ACT or SAT um, prep courses, which I thought they were really helpful while I was taking them. Thank you, Sophia. Are there any other additional questions? All right, so in addition to the many colleges and universities that you see on the screen, the class of 2020, there are about um, 12 colleges uh, that we are going to list right now um, where some of our seniors are going in the fall. Um, many of them have made their decision and some are still um, deciding. American University, Barnard College, Boston University, Dartmouth College, Leslie University, Lafayette College, Mount Holyoke College, Pratt Institute, Syracuse University, 
Trinity College, University of Wa Washington, and Worcester Polytech Institute. All right, next we're gonna head over to Harrington Hall where Sonia will tell us about Harrington Hall. Um, so Harrington Hall is basically kind of the, the student hub of campus in my opinion. Um, so Harrington Hall, in addition to being a the dining hall. Um, we have our bookstore there in a, in a student commons. We also have a the lower classmen girls dorm um, upstairs above everything. Um, so the Charger Cafe is obviously our dining hall. Um, what's really cool about Chapel Hill is for day, even for day students, um, all three meals are included in tuition. So day students can come early for breakfast, stay late for dinner. Um, even on the weekends, we love when day students come back to participate in our weekend activities, which we'll mention a little bit later. Um, we also have our bookstore, um, which obviously is our, all our school supplies, spirit gear, and lots of food. Can't forget that one. Um, and yeah, so the, the student comms as well is a good place to go kind of in between classes, um, mostly after classes or during lunch. Um, so. I always say, uh, you know, it, we have the Apple TV, so if you want to just stream something from your phone, you can always do that. Netflix is always a popular one. We have a ping pong table. Um, there's a piano, everything. Um, yeah, so um, me and Sophia are going to go more on, into weekend activities. So as a boarding student, um, sometimes I stay on the weekend, sometimes I go home just because I am a local boarder. Um, but we have lots of different things. Um, yeah, Sophia, do you want to? Yeah, so for me at least, um, having been in public school basically my whole life, um, the whole aspect of coming to school on the weekends was really weird for me, but I know um, it really helped me kind of find my place in the community. Um, one of my favorite things actually is we do baking with Miss Lee and Ellie, who's actually on this call right now. Um, she invites like day students, boarders into her apartment at school and we really just bake. So I know one time we made pasta. Um, but yeah, as a day student, um, I like to come back on the weekends. Um, I just think that like the majority of my friends are actually boarders. So I just like to come back and hang out. Um, all the weekend activities are really fun. So it's definitely an option for day and boarding. Like day students are always welcome. There's really no exclusion in that. Tell me about some of the other uh, weekend activities that happen that are off campus. So I know a lot of the off campus ones, um, they do some trips to different malls. Um, I think they did a Six Flags trip this year or a Canopy trip. Um, they go to the Rentham outlets, a lot of movie outings, stuff like that. Um, I know for one of the dorm bondings this year, they actually took all the boarding students to launch, which sounded really fun. Um, so there's a lot of like off-campus options as well. They find a lot of good ways to get the boarding students out and seeing different things. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think um, we obviously it's great when day students come back. Um, definitely helps, you know, of a more community feel. I also forgot to mention study hall. Um, so obviously, as I said, three different dorms, um, one lower classman girls. Um, one upperclassman girls and then all the boys are together. Um, so boarding students have a mandatory study hall from um, 7.30 to 9.30 every night. And obviously with um, the higher grade, you get a little bit more responsibility. So um, for the ninth and 10th graders, you don't have it in your room. Um, you have it in a different location. So I know in Harrington Hall, the girls have it in the dining hall, which is right below. Um, and then for the Worcester lower classroom boys, Worcester Hall is our boys, I forgot to mention that. Um, we, they have them in Wilkins, um, which is our academic building, as Max was saying. Um, but then when you get to um, junior and senior year, you can do it in your room. I know for me, when I do study hall, I always go into the lounge or I go to um, Wilkins to meet with, with teachers who are on duty. Um, so you definitely don't have to stay in your room. I find it easier to go out and get my homework done than be in my room. To add on to that, um, study hall is also one of those things that's also um, always welcome for day students to attend. So I know for me, I'm the type of learner that learns better in a classroom setting. 
So I know I usually stay for at least an hour of study hall just because it is helpful for me to get all my work done, especially because a lot of my teachers actually live on campus and are dorm parents. So it's nice to be able to stay after school during that study hall time and like sit down with them and get my work done. Thank you. All right, before we head over to Worcester Hall, does anybody have any questions about Harrington Hall? Yes, we have a question about how, um, how does it affect the social experience to be a day student instead of a boarding student? I mean, I personally, um, I personally as a day student, um, I don't really feel like there's any difference between my friendships with other day students and other boarders. Um, I think our community, um, the fact that it's so welcoming to day students always coming back onto campus for all of those activities outside of school makes it a lot easier to kind of create that inclusive community. Um, as a day student, I really don't find any problem or issue um, with creating friends who are boarders. So I think that's really cool because I don't see any divide between the day students, the boarding students, the international students. Um, I think the way that the teachers and the faculty work to create such a welcoming community for the kids, I think it really, it kind of eliminates the um, split that there might be. Yeah, I definitely agree with Sophia. Um, I was a day student my freshman year and then transitioned over to boarding and I would say Okay. kind of seeing both perspectives I a thousand percent agree with everything Sophia said there's not really a, a you know divide between the two you know I have friends who are day students I have friends that are boarding students um you know since like what again like what Sophia was saying the day students are allowed back for all those things it makes for just one bigger community feel versus like a bunch of little communities within one thank you so much all right we're going to head over to Worcester Hall Sonia, do you mind telling us briefly about Worcester Hall? Yes, sorry about that. Um, so Worcester Hall is our boys dorm. Um, like, as I said, we had three dorms. So the girls are split up into um, two and the boys are all together. Um, Worcester Hall just got renovated, I think three years ago. Um, it has a great view onto the pond, which is always really nice. Um, uh, I Girls are allowed there for study hall. Um, if you're checked in, um, yeah, so, you know, the rooms are mainly doubles. I think there's one triple in there, um, and they do have RAs in every single dorm. Thank you so much. All right, are there any other questions about Worcester Hall and or anything else that came up during the tour? All right, so I have a quick question for all of our wonderful students. Um, what is your favorite part about CHCH? Um, my favorite part about CHCH, do you want me to go? Uh, my favorite part about CHCH is um, just the community and how accepting it was. And uh, I remember coming and, and I was like, I didn't quite know where to go, but after like a week, I felt accepted. I felt like I knew what I was doing. I knew where I was going. And I also love how I have a, how I technically almost have like a plan for where I have to go. And I'm really happy that I have that because that's really helped me with basically everything. Um, I think my favorite part of Chapel Hill is definitely the support I've gotten. Um, growing up in kind of like a public school community my whole life, I never really felt that sense of support academically that I really needed. Um, so I'd say my favorite part is definitely that. Um, the skills and academic support classes really helped me my sophomore year, and they actually helped me so much that I was able to wean off of them my junior year. Um, but I think even in all my other classes, all the teachers are so accommodating and really if you just voice how you're feeling within the classroom, 
um, they're always there to support you no matter what you need. Sophia, if um, you could just speak to just, you know, coming in as a 10th grader and not having, you know, been here with the freshman class, you know, we do add about 10 to 15 new sophomores every year because we do keep the ninth grade class smaller by design, um, as Sonia mentioned, to really help with that transition from middle school to high school. Um, but, you know, we do an orientation trip by grade level every year. We have preseason practices, but can you speak to a little bit about, like, did you feel like it was a really difficult transition for you to come into a community like ours or what was your experience like? Yeah, so it was definitely a big change going from a larger school to a smaller school um, and also coming in with my grade already knowing each other. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty nerve-wracking the first like couple of days just because I didn't know anybody but honestly by like the first week I had found so many solid friends and I really never thought that like a transition from switching schools, especially in high school, could have been that easy. Mm -hmm. um, I think what helped me a lot was really like getting involved, but I wouldn't say I had to overly like extrovert myself. Mm -hmm. um, I find that a lot of the students who have already been at Chapel Hill, everybody there is so welcoming and they're really like, they're helpful in the sense that like they will reach out to you and make the effort to make you feel comfortable. You don't have to kind of like, really put yourself out there like you're allowed to be shy you're allowed to feel nervous but like everybody who's already been there really like reached out to me and made the effort to like get to know me which mm -hmm. made my transition 10 times easier mm -hmm. that's great thanks for sharing that Sophia yeah I also think along with the support I a thousand percent agree again with Sophia on that um I also think the opportunities that Chapel Hill has provided me you know in a big public school with thousands of kids, I, those were, are impossible, you know? So, you know, I have gotten multiple, in, I've gotten one, excuse me, one internship opportunity with school. So I was, um, I interned with the athletic trainer, which was really nice, really interesting. Um, and yeah, I think just the opportunities, even for like success, academic success, like doesn't match anywhere else, you know, again, like in a big public school, you're not going to get that support. I know coming in, I really needed a lot of support academically and that was given. Definitely. I think it has given me so much confidence and just the opportunities for support and for different things is my favorite part. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks Sonia for sharing. Max, do you have anything you, you'd like to add? Uh, yes, I would like to add something. So <laughs> I came from a public school um, and I really wanted to try and branch off because at my public school, I wasn't really, I was doing okay academically. Mm -hmm. um, socially, I was kind of struggling, I will admit. Mm -hmm. um, so I, what I really wanted is kind of a fresh start because at my old school, I kind of like, I was, I didn't really feel, felt like I belonged there. Mm -hmm. um, which, I mean, I've been going to public school but right before Chapel Hill. I've done okay in elementary school, but middle school is, is when I realized I think I need a change. So my mom and I looked at Chapel Hill. We toured the Miss Nelly, actually. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was blown away by the campus. And just, um, I uh, also, like, w really wanted to, um, I also wanted more academic support because that's something that I needed at my old school, which they did offer it, but it's nowhere near as good as Chapel Hill's academic support. And I've just grown so much as a learner and as a person. And I made, like, a lot of really good, um, friends from Chapel Hill and I that will be close with me through college and everything and I really I feel very fortunate enough to come to the school and mm -hmm. I am very happy with the choice so yeah. yeah great and do you feel like um do you feel like you're also a challenge in your classes like because you know coming from a big public school to a smaller school you know with you know 12 to 14 in a class like you know although you needed that support but do you feel like you've been challenged in in your classes too to kind of be ready for college yeah so definitely especially when i now that i'm a junior that's like the one of the biggest years of high school when you're like starting to look at colleges and everything and i've definitely been challenged to you know do better with my work i'm trying to push myself to go even farther with like my papers and all my projects and stuff and um also, I think like the biggest difference that Chapel Hill has made on me are the teachers, how they're super friendly and supportive. And mm -hmm. I think what I believe is in what I believe is I think the teachers I really like that they want you to succeed, and that's mm -hmm. what I really value. Because at my public school, I would never have that individual. Attention. So that's what I really value. 
Good. Thank you, Max. Yeah, of uh, course. Yeah. Henry, um, do you want to just talk about your transition coming from um, the Carroll School um, into CHCH, coming from a uh, from an independent school to CHCH, and kind of what yeah. experiences? You know, like? I needed the support as a freshman, but definitely like as a or sophomore, I was able to like have um, more freedom. And then as a junior, I took all honors classes, and then as a senior, I'm taking two APs in an honors class right now so I found that like the transition was very fluid um the teachers are super supportive the academic help is there when you need it but if you really want to excel and you know become more academically independent you, there also are harder options available um and I would say the biggest thing for me that I love about CHCH is the teachers themselves not so much you know how they teach but the legitimate uh people they are they're super nice and genuine and like I know personally that I can name three or four teachers on the campus right now that I would consider close friends of mine, people who I trust and, you know, are there to support me, you know, not just coming in for a paycheck. They're really there for the kids because they love their job and they really love to, you know, connect with the students and really um, help them grow and excel and be the best that they can be overall. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Henry. Um, and Christian, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, everybody pretty much covered, um, everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love the theater program. Yeah, I do. I love theater. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, uh, I also, I also found the, uh, SAS department very helpful. It was sort of like a place where I could like, not only like just get some work done, but also like, um, get like some, like, skills on like managing like my time. How much should I spend on this assignment? How much should I spend on that? Should I do this right now or should I do this? And also getting that extra help from the teacher was incredible and really helped me a lot. And I've been taking it uh, all my years at CGH. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, a parent was asking, um, you know, with students coming from, from all over and just kind of having that unique perspective, right, that you're not only a day school, um, but also have that boarding component as well. Um, Sophia, do you want to talk a little bit about how that impacts your experience from coming from public school to now a, a school with so much diversity? Yeah, so I've grown up in a predominantly white town my entire life. Um, and as a person of color, it was kind of hard to find, like, people who shared the same like differences as me um so i found that coming to chapel hill i felt so much more comfortable especially in the classroom um it's really nice to have that sense of belonging with everybody else who's different um like me um i think it also adds to like better conversations because not everybody is coming from the same exact background mm -hmm. um the sense of diversity just creates like more of a home for everybody and I think it creates a lot of like better discussion um, and it just helps things flow. I mm -hmm. feel like everybody also feels comfortable to share their opinions just because there is so much diversity. Mm -hmm. um, you're not being singled out. So I like having all the diversity. I think it helps me learn a lot more, definitely about like other cultures, about my friends' cultures. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for sharing, Sophia. Uh, another question too, um, something we haven't talked about is the, the spring session. Um, we don't do um, trips abroad for a semester or so, but we do have um, something called spring sessions, which is typically a week long um, thing that we do at the end of the school year before our graduation. Um, actually faculty um, collaborate with one another to come up with different trips, both on campus, um, locally, and then, um, you know, out of state and sometimes um, internationally as well. Unfortunately, our trip to Spain had to get um, canceled due to, you know, the current situation we're in right now. Um, but does anyone want to talk about maybe a cool spring session trip that they did? Because it's something really fun just to have that experiential learning and get off campus. So Max and then Christian. Yeah, so actually, I think Sonia is going to say the exact same thing that I had did because we were actually on the same trip freshman and sophomore year. Uh -huh. So freshman year, I went to Colorado, um, which was such a fun trip because I got to experience the outdoors, a part of the country that I've never been to, and I really got to learn more about. It was beautiful too. Sorry, Mac. It was, oh, it was yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, and Colorado was a lot of fun. That was a really <laughs> fun trip. Made a lot of good friends from it. A lot of fun stuff happened. Um, 
So I really do enjoy those trips. And then my sophomore year, me and Sonia also went to Alabama, which was a very fun trip. I got to learn a lot about the black history in our country. And it was all the museums they went to were really meaningful and impactful. And it was very hot in Alabama, but it was a lot of, a lot of fun. And we had a real, that I really, I, I can't talk. I really liked that trip because we also had like a really good group. It was a small group, I think about 16 of us plus mm -hmm. um, two other teachers. And I really like the spring session. It's like probably like one of my other favorite parts about Chapel Hill. So yeah. That's awesome. Great. Good. Christian. Uh, so uh, in my freshman year, I actually did a, a spring session that was on campus uh, where we made a short film. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of going into the uh, into film studies in the uh, 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 as a career choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year in sophomore year, I went on this phenomenal trip to Montreal, mm -hmm. and I loved every second there being with uh, with my friends, uh, getting to see like these cool sites. And there was also uh, there was this like cabin or like sh or like a restaurant uh, mm -hmm. where they serve you food, but it's also accompanied with maple syrup that they make themselves, which mm -hmm. and I thought was very uh, it it was it tasted great. <laughs> That's great. And uh, it was just a gorgeous city yeah. and I loved it. Good, good, good. So yeah, so these are just experiences that, um, that we offer every year. Again, once you know, the school year's wrapping up and you know, it's just a good way to, to do something that you, you enjoy and have fun with, so good. Um, many, many parents just wanna thank our students for just being so honest and sharing your experiences and stories, um, super helpful. Um, I'll give you another moment if there's any other questions. Uh, I also wanna just really mention on our website, when you go to chch.org, um, there is a virtual experience um, pop up and under the admission section, there's a page for you to be able to um, you know, hear from from pre previous events that we've offered. Um, so we have different live recordings that we've done um, on many different topics, such as getting more in depth with our athletics program, academics at CHCH, arts from performing and um, visual arts, college counseling. We also had an amazing um, student panel and parent panel as well. And so I think that, um, you know, if you want any more information, um, definitely sign up on the virtual experience page. You just have to enter um, just a little bit of information um, and then that's where it is. And it has all these videos with timestamps um, and some other resources for you to learn more about our community. There's also a distance learning tab on the top um, in this unusual time right Right now we have gone to remote learning and we've created a page as a resource um, both for our current students and um, for prospective students just to get a better sense of how we transformed um, our wonderful community and really you know at the core of everything that we do making sure that there's really still the learning support um, and everything happening, even for our international students to feel still connected and, and that learning has not stopped. Um, one question that did just come in, how do the students feel um, the school is doing with remote learning? Um, you know, although it's, you know, the best thing we do is on campus and with our great teachers and, and students, but, um, you know, in lieu of that, you know, does anyone want to talk about kind of their transition from yeah. being on campus? Yeah, so, um, you know, Obviously, there's no good timing for anything like this to happen, but it did happen when we were on spring break, and that's when we first started delaying everything. So definitely the teachers and everyone had time to you know, plan everything. Um, since we do have 75-minute classes in person, we've shaved it down to 50 minutes on the computer. Um, I, you know, from what I see, Chapel, from what I'm experiencing, excuse me, Chapel is doing an amazing job with um, the remote learning, distance distance learning. Um, we have real classes every day. We have interactive classes. Um, you know, my history class today. We were watching a film together. You know, a screen share, and it was it was great. We had a great conversation. Even in science, we're watching things, doing things. So I think like their classes, interactive classes. We're still participating the amount that we do in person. And I think you know, given all the circumstances, like it is great. Mm -hmm. 
And we're still doing things like a virtual assembly. If you want to ever join us for a virtual assembly, that's a really cool thing um, that we're, we're offering. Um, we still have advisory period. You're still getting your weekly progress reports. Um, and I also want to mention that only not only do students get that on Tuesdays, they are written to the students to review with their advisor, but also parents have access to those on Wednesdays, um, as well as if a student is in skills and academic support program, that teacher also has access to them, dorm parents. So, um, so there's a lot of communication it's kind of hard to fall behind or, or hide um, like you might be able to do in public school so lots of communication there so um, so great so yeah so Matt thank you for posting the um, virtual experience page it is now live um, so we're going to be offering many different events from now until September um, just like these other than the live tour we're going to be doing um, again, just different sessions on different parts of our, our community. Um, so please feel free to sign up for those. And if you're interested in scheduling an info session with one of us in admissions, we'd be happy um, to set up a one-on-one -on -one time to meet with you. But I just wanna say thank you to everyone and great job to our students. Um, you know, they, they just thank always, um, yeah, they've just done a great job, Caroline. Thanks for, for coordinating and Christina for fielding questions. Um, so thanks again, everyone for joining us for this virtual tour and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks so much, everyone.